Welcome, dear viewers, to Nursat Satellite Channel in Tel Aviv TV. We begin with the following headlines. Pope Francis to the bishops, let us rise and carry the joy of the gospel along the paths of the world. Eight Christian figures entered the new Jordanian Senate. A spiritual gathering brings together the pastoral councils under the Latin Patriarchate in Jordan. The Union of Religious Orders in Jordan convenes to live the Christian hope and the joy of the mission. From the headlines to the details. His Holiness Pope Francis presided over the works of the General Assembly of the Synod of Bishops, which was attended by 376 bishops from various parts of the world. In his homily, he expressed, As we carry much gratitude in our hearts for what we have been able to share, there remain many things that can leave us unprepared to face the challenges of reality. It is beautiful that the Synod encourages us to be a church that is inclusive of those who feel the tremors of salvation and allows themselves to be awakened by the power of the Gospel. The Holy Father continued saying, A believer can recognize God's work in their life and can follow Him. However, we must remember to return to the Lord and to His Gospel, placing ourselves in a position to listen to His call and walk with Him on the path. Pope Francis concluded his homily by stating, This is a synodal church that unites us in the gift of the Holy Spirit, which makes us all brothers in Christ. Let us rise and carry the joy of the gospel along the paths of the world. The royal decree has been issued to form a senate, chaired by His Excellency Mr. Faisal al Fayez, with a membership of 69 men and women. The new senate includes eight Christian members, Dr. Raja al Mashir, Engineer Isa Ayyub, Dr. Wajih Awais, Ms. Haifa Najjar, Dr. Mustafa Al-Hamarni, Dr. George Hizboun, Mr. Michael Nizal, and Dr. Salah al halasi His Royal Highness Prince Hassan bin Talal, Honorary President of the World Council for Refugees and Immigration, issued a statement regarding the humanitarian situation in Lebanon amid the displacement of nearly one million people, many of whom have fled to the north while others seek safety across borders. In the statement, His Royal Highness and the Council President emphasized the urgent need for immediate response to provide care for the displaced and for the international community to address the escalating crisis and support and protect civilians most vulnerable to the devastating consequences of this conflict. He affirmed that the scale of the crisis in Lebanon requires urgent international support, noting that the ongoing instability hinders efforts to achieve lasting peace and regional harmony. His Beatitude Cardinal Pierre Battista Bizzabella, the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, presided over the annual Divine Liturgy for the St. Vincent de Paul Society in Jerusalem, with the participation of Father Amjad Sabra, parish priest of Jerusalem, along with several priests, consuls, and faithful. In his homily, his Beatitude highlighted the changes that St. Vincent de Paul brought to the life of the Church and society, noting that there were no previously opportunities for women to dedicate themselves to serving God in the field. He recognized that women possess a unique gift for serving those in need, which encouraged him to establish charitable societies under the patronage of the Daughters of Charity. His beatitude concluded by addressing the current circumstances, stating, Our organizations have faced significant challenges recently, and we feel that we do not have the sufficient capacity to meet all needs. He expressed gratitude to all benefactors and supporters, and in closing, emphasized the importance of unity in facing challenges. At Teresanta College in Jabal al the family of the Union of Religious Orders in Jordan gathered around His Reverend, Father Matthew, parish priest of Our Lady of Mountain Carmel in Northern Hashmi, and the Union Spiritual Guide, His Reverence, Father Rashid Mstrih. This was during the first meeting of the religious orders, which this year was titled Christian's Hope, a Year of Prayer, Pilgrims of Hope. Father Matthew focused on the spirituality of living the Christian hope, which is a gift from God. After a break and welcoming remarks, a festive Mass was celebrated in honor of Our Lady of Palestine, presided over by Father Rashid Mstrih, the Union Spiritual Guide. In his homily, Father Mstrih emphasized that we should live our mission with joy and serve with humility, following the example of our Blessed Mother. Afterwards, everyone proceeded to the confessional to receive the grace of this sacrament. The priests of the Latin Patriarchate in Jordan concluded their annual spiritual retreat at the Visitation House run by the Sisters of the Rosary in Dabuq, area of Amman. This retreat was themed the Pastoral Letters of St. Paul, focusing on the theological and spiritual dimensions of St. Paul's letters and the reflection on the lives of priests in the present age. Monsignor Khaled Akashe, head of the Dialogue Office with the Muslims in the Vatican's Department of Interreligious Dialogue, led the retreat. 
Monsignor Akashe concluded six sessions in which participants discussed ideas and values derived from St. Paul's letters and presented new insights to help priests enhance their spiritual and social roles. A spiritual gathering was held at the Our Lady of Peace Center on Airport Road, bringing together the pastoral councils affiliated with the Latin Patriarchate in Jordan. The meeting was attended by the spiritual guide of the councils, Father Sliman Shubash, along with several priests, nuns, and parish councils. After the opening prayer, Father Shubash welcomed the attendees. This was followed by a training workshop led by Mr. Khalil Asfour, which focused on leadership qualities and types. The attendees then broke into discussion sessions led by some of the finest youth members, who shared their leadership and pastoral experiences. Subsequently, a dialogue session was held with a spiritual guide regarding the importance of the Council's involvement in pastoral and service life alongside the priest and various parish activities. The meeting concluded with the Divine Liturgy presided over by Bishop Suleiman Sayer, who spoke in his homily about how to be servants of Christ's message and the Gospel. In the framework of enhancing humanitarian relief efforts, Mr. Callahan, President of the Catholic Relief Services, visited Caritas Jordan accompanied by a high-level delegation. During the meeting with the General Director, Mr. Wael Suleiman, and the management team, Mr. Callahan listened to a detailed presentation on Caritas Jordan's current projects and initiatives. The visit also included the inauguration of the Catholic Relief Services Office in Amman, attended by the Papal Ambassador to Jordan, Bishop Giovanni Pietro del Tazo. The importance of opening this office was emphasized as a strategic step to support Caritas' mission and vision in assisting those in need and promoting sustainable development through the signing of a partnership agreement between Caritas Jordan and Catholic Relief Services. The visit concluded with a tour of one of the agency's warehouses, where the processes of sorting and dispatching humanitarian aid were showcased, reflecting the agency's deep commitment to relief work and addressing the needs of affected communities. The Bible Society achieved a prominent position in sales at the International Book Fair in Amman. The organizers at the Society's booth reported that the design of the booth was primarily based on the theme of God's story with humanity. It featured visual explanations of key events from the Bible for visitors in an engaging manner. The booth was notable for its beautiful design and the variety of displayed books, as well as virtual reality experience about the story of Prophet Noah, which facilitated smooth and enjoyable interactions with the audience. The organizers considered the Amman Book Fair one of the most important opportunities to showcase Jordanian's Christian identity and believed it to be the best venue for spreading the world of God to everyone. Many visitors noted that this was their first time seeing and obtaining a Bible. They pointed out that the best-selling titles were the New Testament and 100 Steps for the Bible for Children. The staff working in Palestinian public hospitals organized support rallies for their colleagues in Gaza medical and emergency teams. This initiative comes in light of the direct targeting, bombing, killing and displacement faced by doctors in the region amid the ongoing genocide perpetuated by the Israeli occupation against Gaza. Participants raised banners demanding an end to these crimes and called for the respect of international laws and conventions that prohibits the attacks on medical service providers. Health Minister Majid Abu Ramadan stated that these rallies are recognition of the immense efforts made by Gaza's doctors in fulfilling their humanitarian duty to treat patients and the injured in the medical centers and hospitals, especially in the northern part of the region. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development stated that if the war in Gaza ends and the region returns to the status quo that existed before October 7, 2023, it may take 350 years for its struggling economy to recover to pre-war levels. The report added that simply achieving a ceasefire would not set Gaza on the necessary path for recovery and sustainable development. The ongoing war has caused massive destruction across the territory, with roads and infrastructure completely devastated as well as entire neighborhoods and residential areas beyond destroyed. Before reconstruction can begin, mountains of debris filled with decaying bodies and unexploded ordnance must be cleared. In Gaza, Father Gabriel, the parish priest, along with several other priests, celebrated the Divine Liturgy and the presentation of promise of 16 young men and women on the Feast of Our Lady of Palestine. The purpose of the celebration was to consecrate their lives to Christ through the Virgin Mary. In his homily, Father Gabriel emphasized the importance of prayer amidst suffering, noting that this promise symbolizes their love and faith in Christ, despite the difficult circumstances they face. The families expressed their joy at the step taken by their children under the guidance of the nuns, which had a positive impact on their lives amid the challenges. At the end of the celebration, everyone gathered to exchange congratulations and enjoyed sweets together. 
The Latin College in Beit Jala hosted the second meeting for engaged couples from the Latin parishes in Palestine, organized by Family Center affiliated with the Latin Patriarchate in Jerusalem. This meeting, attended by 34 young men and women from various parishes, is part of the Center's efforts to prepare couples for marriage by helping them establish healthy and spiritual relationships and providing them with the necessary tools to face challenges that may arise in family life. The meeting included two lectures on sexual education for couples, focusing on the importance of premarital checkups contraceptive methods, and related topics. After a break, Father Bernard Buji, head of the Latin Seminary in Beit Jala, spoke about the Catholic Church's position on medical ethics, highlighting how couples can begin their married life by involving God in their lives and seeking His blessing. Dear viewers, we have reached the end of our broadcast. Before we conclude, here's a recap of the highlights covered herein. Pope Francis to the bishops, let us rise and carry the joy of the gospel along the path of the world. Eight Christian figures entered the new Jordanian Senate. A spiritual gathering brings together the pastoral councils under the Latin Patriarchate in Jordan. The Union of Religious Orders in Jordan convenes to live the Christian hope and the joy of the mission. For more details, please visit our website, nursatjo.org. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time. Have a good day.